The All Smiling Faces podcast is now sponsored by Tire Spot, the Northeast's leading tire supplier with branches across the region. Tire Spot don't just do tires, they cover everything from servicing to wheel alignment. They can handle every aspect of your car's maintenance. For more information, visit tirespot.co.uk. Enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube channel and podcast. Uh, myself and Decker are back uh, tonight to look back over that Everton game and discuss many other things, all Newcastle United related. And before we get going, if anybody does have any questions or if you just want to comment in throughout the show, we will be going for around about an hour. Just throw in a comment and we will go through as many as possible. Won't we, Decker? Absolutely, absolutely. We will, we absolutely, will. Yeah. Um, so, Deca, it's only been a handful of days. The highs and lows of Newcastle United. Yeah. So, Saturday's performance, or well, second half performance, will we'll turn things around. And it's a, a comeback to remember. One of the best games St. James's Park has witnessed in an X amount of years, in decades, mm. probably up there with the best. And you look at PSG, the comeback for the Arsenal, and so on and so on and so on. Then, you have Everton coming to town. Uh, town. Everton, who's... Who are probably the benchmark this season for for a poor side in the Premier League? Um, the, the the long ball specialists, as many would would class. And to be fair, over the years, I've, I've probably defended Sean Dyche and thought hey, he's not too bad of a manager. He gets a bad rep. That was some long ball football I saw yesterday. Um, but then yes, but we'll have the comeback v Arsenal. Then we'll have the collapse v Everton. Aston Villa will come back again. Again, I mean, um, um, West Ham. Sorry, West Ham. No, 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 sorry. No, it, was Arsenal. Arsenal. Oh, it wasn't Arsenal, it was West Ham. <laughs> it's because you're here. Yeah, I've got Sorry, Arsenal yeah. on the brain. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> it I is because we're having a conversation about Arsenal yeah, on the wheel. Right, yeah. Um, but against West Ham, yes. Um Degga, um, explain it. What's going on? God. Um, well, I think I've calmed down a lot since since last night when since, it, Monday. since the the game had finished. Um I was really annoyed at the end of the game. Um for multiple reasons, really. Um, but I think what I did think I have took a little bit more stock and a little bit more of a balanced approach, I think. And I think what I'm kind of realizing is that, and this is going to sound ridiculous when I say this, but more and more, I think, with the modern game, it's not 11 players that's going to win you the game. It's more and more about who can come off, off the bench to affect a game. Yeah. Right. More and more, I feel that that's happening. And I just feel, and I did say this on Monday, to be fair, that I thought Evan would be a tough one given the fact. The amount of injuries and in, personnel in, available. Yeah, personnel available. Um, and I think that we did, we started like a house on fire. I, I thought we were excellent, to be fair, for a long, long period of the game. And I know we'll go into a bit more detail. We had more multiple chances to be able to kill them off. But I did feel that the longer the game went on, it, then we're coming more and more back into it. And I agree. We, we were almost playing into their hands with our approach and style. Um, and then obviously we we made subs along the way, which of course we'll get onto one of them. But I just didn't. I thought we were losing a little bit of gas, and we just didn't have personnel to try and ignite. I agree. I, I think the first half we managed that first half very well, really good. Um, just contained our stamina. Really didn't didn't really hit them too hard, but we just knew that that game was ours. We knew that go, as soon as the first whistle started. Hence why we had umpteen opportunities. Mm. Um, you could just see that Everton weren't really. I want to say they weren't up for the fight because they just didn't really seem overly interested throughout the game, apart from towards the end, where we saw a little bit of a change, but not much. But the first half, yes, it was Newcastle's. That was Newcastle's game to lose. Um, fortunately, we didn't. But I think, as you said, as the game went on, the second half, as soon as the lads came out from the second half, it just seemed like we just expected to win that to a certain degree. We thought, we've already seen what they can offer in the first half. Yeah, which they don't is have anything else yeah. going forward. Which I thought just allowed us to sit back a little bit, but it's it's probably what you're saying once again that it goes down to personnel and maybe it is playing on the player's mind that they're here for ninety minutes and there's not really much to look at on the bench to come off and, and change things. Maybe that's been a huge part as well. Yeah, I think as well you've got to remember likes of Barnes hasn't played much football either, so he's playing. You know, we're trotting him out there for ninety minutes. Um, hmm. Elliot Anderson's another one. 
who I do want to mention at some point, how impressed I am with him. I still think he's a great, really good player in there. Mm. But again, he hasn't played much football. Yeah. So again, when you're asking him to start games, he's going to start to um, tire, you know, within games. Um, the cross the same. Try your mate again. It's gone already. Gone already. It's gone already. People that watch the Monday Night Show will realise that this is something that happens to Tekka's mic. I don't know. I don't we know. are going to replace Tekka's mic. Is it back on? Is it back on? It's straight back on, mate. Oh, okay. I'm not. I'm literally <laughs> not going to touch it again. Um, Kraft's another one. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Hall's another one. There's, the problem is you're bringing in these players, right? But they haven't played much football. So the, the, they might start, which they did, they did yesterday. You know, perfect. Exactly what you were expecting. I, I just feel maybe tactically... I'd, I'd never feel we we'll manage a game correctly, mate. Like, mm. and, I, and I, well, I say never. That's that's a strong. Do, do you think? I, I agree to your certain extent, but do you think that we can't really look too far past the injury situation which we have as well when it comes to managing the game? Because Eddie Howe hasn't got much at the minute to to manage the game with to a certain extent. But there were, there were, we're one nil up in that game with 20, you know, 15, 20 minutes to go, mm. and there were still times where then we're breaking them and only had two or three at the back. Well, I don't understand how we. Uh, I appreciate, and our, and our people will say, well, you've got to try and get the second goal. But I just think sometimes we're just, it's gung-ho football at times that I see. And it was like basketball again in the second half where we had an opportunity, we missed, woof, then, then we're breaking up the other end. I just, I, I don't know, it just seems to, why can't we not, we don't seem to be able to keep all the possession, run the clock down. It, it's just this absolute gung-ho approach mm. of like, we're bombing forward and then we had five, six, seven, there was one, we had five or six players in their box, which I know in a, in a sense is great. We lost the ball and we looked vulnerable, you know, within within seconds up the other end. And it's, I don't know, I just I just think sometimes we just seem to sh- not shoot ourselves in the foot, but it is very. It's I keep mentioning this basketball term of just end to end, all the time. And that's I still think that's worrying. Like I think Everton figured out quite early on that that our left hand side was a hell of a lot better than the right hand side, because it seemed like everything that that they wanted to do just went down that side, with where you had Kraft and. Murphy on the right hand side, yeah. Whereas the left hand side, you had had Bonds, and we saw the best of Bonds against West Ham. But it was a slight difference of performance from Bonds because against West Ham, he was on the receiving end of of, of the the passenger play. Whereas against Everton, it seemed like he was the one trying to create that to a certain extent. Him and Anderson were linking up pretty well on the left hand side. I, I, very impressed with quite a bit. I was very impressed with both of my. I, I thought Bonds was more. Um. Almost trying to emulate Gordon a little bit more in regards to picking the ball up deep and really charging, if that mm. makes sense. Um, I actually at times got mixed up between Anderson and Pons a little bit, to be honest at times. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I have to say, I thought Anderson Anderson looks, he's a good player. He's a good footballer. Yes. Him. Uh, very good on the ball. He, he's, he, he'll have it in tight areas. It's just um, a shame that his season was, was hindered by injury. But hindered like by injury. Because uh, this was going to yeah. be his technically breakthrough season, even yeah. though we've seen him before. But He's very good this was his chance with the European football and yeah. obviously cup football, which was along the lines. And It's, it, a, it's a funny one, though. You think about the game. You, you, the opening minute there, Pickford pulls off a hell of a save. Is that Barnes, is it? So is it Anderson that has that shot? Um, which is saved by Pick. Hell of a save. It's the first opening mm. couple of minutes. You've got the one where Hall does brilliantly to get a ball across, which then Murphy smashes yeah. and Pickford saves. Like... There's there's, there's there's moments in the game where you could have went in two or three nil up. To be quite honest, really, mm. um, and you know it's just it's frustrating. And then obviously, I I just felt in the second half the lads began to tire. Everton grew in confidence. Then made three good substitutions as well, bringing on Calvert Lewin, the Ruan Gomez, and someone else. It was three they made that were very um, adventurous subs. I thought that, that's when you saw things change slightly because you think yep. right they've got fresh legs coming on, yep. and we. Let's be honest, looking at the bench, you only had Joe Willock in the bench. That's really going to cause an well, I'm saying, I was going to say an impact, but somebody did manage to cause an impact for the other the other yeah. reason. The UFC um, yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll get on to him in, in just a bit. But you, you're right what you're saying. I think looking at that bench, and even before kickoff, you looked at the available players to come on and, and impact after the start of 11. Willock's your only real option there. Yeah, well, Richie was on the bench, but again, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. I appreciate what you're saying, yeah. yeah. It, it, it just seems like... As much as I want to criticise that performance, because because it, it was bad in the second half. As much as I want to criticise it, I can't look past the injuries and the players. I just I can't. No, no, I'm with you. I'm I'm absolutely with you, hundred percent. And and I, and I think I actually think sometimes I'm quite negative. Sometimes the way I come across, the more I think about it. But even I, I was annoyed yesterday. But I was annoyed for one reason, which we'll get to eventually. But you you can't be, can you? Because the lad the lads are going out there, and as, as I've mentioned this before, as I have earlier. A lot of the players that were relying on to come in and play haven't played much football to start mm. with. 
So they're obviously going to tire as you know, it's different if you go two or three up because then obviously their heads drop, their belief drops, and you probably just coast through at the end. But when it's one nil, you just always have that feeling, you know. To be fair, I'm saying we we did have a couple of chances. Tarkovsky had a hell of a chance in the first half. They had a them could have went one nil. It's got to score there. It's got to score there. So you know, they'll probably see them our chances as well. But we were definitely the better side. I just felt this as the second half went on, I was getting more and more concerned that uh we're letting them. I mean, they hit the post, um, which was a hell of a, a hell of a chance. Shea made a great challenge; could have been another one. Um, but it's letting, yeah. letting that lead slip, which we've seen so many times know, this season, especially at home. We've dropped, we've dropped some real, uh, some a lot of points against opposition. We would have, we do expect to have hammered, like yeah. or certainly beat. Sorry, so you're looking at Forest, Luton, Bournemouth. Yeah, Bournemouth as well. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's, there's it's, a few. It's, it's, it's a few people have actually tweeted us today with, you know, we've dropped twelve points against these teams. It happens in football. It happens, but. I suppose it shouldn't, though, right? But I, I agree with your point that you, you, we're, we're, we've said a lot of times, oh, we're at the bottom of the barrel here. We are actually. We definitely were last yeah, night. Yeah, last night we were there, like, mm. um, which is which is sad. It's very sad. I, I think, do, do you know what it is? I, I think if we look at individual performances, we'll, we'll have to look at Isaac as well. Mm. Uh, Isaac, an absolute fantastic finish. Great passage to play for from Isaac. He just, he's just skipping around players in, in the box as, as what he does best. He, he done similar against Evan, not obviously. Last time, and yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, time before that was yeah. last season. When nice playing them, yeah. Was that the, when he got the assist of the assist? That's right, yeah. And was it Murphy that Murphy scored? Murphy scored. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Murphy scored. Yeah. So he got the assist of the assist. Yeah. Um, it was a totally slight deflection, didn't it? It did, yeah. Um, but then tonight, uh, sorry, last night, you obviously saw him skip past a few more players, uh, and just one of those at that break where that's obviously expect to have big things ahead of him as well. Um, I'm not sure what he was doing. Uh, he just <laughs> well, he put him in a knot, yeah. It was, it was surprising. He went, if, if he doesn't go to ground there. Ultimately, he blanked on. He might not mm. score that chance, but him going to ground then opens it oh, up. Top. However, Isak is falling over, and to be able to bend it around Pickford, it was a wonderful goal. Great, great. Barnes did. It was a great pass from Barnes as well. And do you know what it is? When we went one nil up, I thought we can get a few. Yeah, I honestly thought tails are up. We we can get a few. And like you said, the opportunities came, and Isak gets gets a, an opportunity where he just hits. It's cleared off the line. Anywhere else, the goal he's got everywhere to hit, and he just hits it down line. But what you see more from from Isaac now, he, he's and he's done it very similar against West Ham. He's looking for the ball now rather than just waiting for the ball. He's looking, he's going looking, hunting for the ball. He, he's dropping into the midfield areas. He's probably thinking, well, I don't really have any option from midfield. Yeah, I need to go and get the ball myself. You saw him dropping out on the right quite a bit as well last night. And that's what I love about Isaac. It was just a shame last night that when he was going hunting for the balls in those positions, there was nobody really there to go and fill in in his position, which you would probably see if, if Gordon was on the field. It, it's just a shame, but do you know what is it? As much as I like Isaac, he's a fantastic player, and I hope he stays at this football club for a long, long time. You can see him getting better as the games go on, but that opportunity later on in the game, he should be burying that one. Is that the one off the line? Off the line. Yeah, I think... Um, yeah. I mean, he scored 19 goals, hasn't he? This yeah, season. great. And I, and I believe, you know... Premier is that yeah? So I, you know, listen, the guy's incredible, and he's missed a bit of the season. As I well. think it's eighteen or nineteen Premier League goals. Yeah, yeah. That's incredible. I don't think it's probably since Shearer. I, I can't recall. It's a great any, record. I can't recall another player scoring that many Premier League goals. The guy's incredible. I, honestly, I love him a bit. Um, uh, I just everything about me is a class. The, the the one negative, the one slightly negative you would say is you probably know in that game he's going to miss a chance. Like you know, yeah. and I suppose isn't it? What well, Harlan misses. Chances as yeah, well. It comes with the strike. You know I mean? doesn't but it? He is going to miss. He, he is going to miss the odd the odd chance, and he, he does. Uh, West Ham was similar, right? West Ham, mm. you know, he, I know he scored two pens and set a goal up, but he also had a few mm. uh, misses as well. But I, I, I absolutely love everything about me. And I, I will say, when he, when we first signed him and I seen him, I was thinking, ah, I'm not, I'm not sure enough he'll be physical enough to be able to handle playing up front in the Premier League. Absolutely incorrect. Yeah. Like you know, I was totally wrong. Um, and I agree with you. Obviously, Wilson's when he plays, he's. He, and I nothing against Wilson, but he's more of a, a classic number nine yeah. that you would expect. Whereas he's, as you say, he'll drift, mm -hmm. get involved, co uh, cause overloads in certain areas. And technically, he's just, he's so, so good. Um, and he's a player that I appreciate he's been linked left, right, and centre. Rightfully so, right, mm -hmm. with other clubs. Of course. Yeah. But he, he, I think he came out with a quote today saying, hey, man, listen, I'm more than happy here. Mm -hmm. I love being here. I'm part of the project, et cetera, et cetera. It's great hearing yeah. those quotes, Digger. They don't always no, stay that you, way, do they? No, you're right, you're right. Because there, there was a one which I think maybe got lost in translation slightly was like, oh, well, you don't know about the future. Yeah. And it's them ones where I'm like, oh, God, it's keeping us up at night. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to lose them, you know? Um, but no, he's a fantastic player. Um, and I just think, I mean, imagine if he was in a, in a, in an all-firing 
I'll say an Arsenal side. I mean, God, he, he could score. God knows how many. Like, he's that good. So I, I know over the last couple of years, yeah, we've looked around the team and thought, which are the, the players you need to keep a hold of? And you know, as a, people automatically argue Bruno, which I agree with 100%. Isaac is up there as well for me. Like, 100%, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. 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 There's, 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 those two are fantastic footballers. Yeah, there's probably... Um, Three, there's probably three players. Like, no, there's probably four that you would have to say that you know you you, you keep. You know, you, know, you, you have to keep. Uh, well, Gordon for me, Gordon, Bruno, uh, Isak, Joe Linton. They're mm. they're like they're the four for me. The 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 one that would have been immediately in there. And to be fair, this is quite harsh. Is it, Botman? I think Botman's because he he could be. I think I said this when we signed him. He could be our company in terms of yeah, really seeing the beginning of the project all the way at the end. I don't know what that. But that I appreciate going to be the injury. We don't know, but. Let's hope that wouldn't be the case. But I think you've got four slash five there that are invaluable, like mm. invaluable. You've got yeah. to do. I think it's about time we we'll, we'll, we'll started looking at the goal that we'll concede. Mm. Digger. So you mentioned bottom of the barrel sort of stuff and, and Paul Dummett was given the new contract, not only just to be a cheerleader, uh, but be there just in case. Um, this sort of situation happened. We managed to get to the bottom of the barrel, Digger. We were scraping the barrel and Paul Dummett comes on at left back. I couldn't tell you the last time he, he featured in the game. It's probably the cup games um, against uh, Man City, Man U and Chelsea, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, cause I think he's only had four minutes of Premier League football or something until yesterday. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Hasn't, he's obviously coming in. He's probably full of nerves. Wrong side of 30. Let, let's remember that. And he's been on the field for a matter of minutes, Decker. And he, he takes a page out of Diamond Dallas's pages. <laughs> No book and, and DDT, just scrapbook yeah. and just DDTs him. Yeah, it's, important, it's yeah. such a strange thing when, when the ball is going nowhere near. It's actually young that he, that he, he puts the pile driver on. Absolutely going nowhere near him. Nobody's getting that apart from, from Dubravka. He, he's, he's picking that out of the air. He's plucking it out of the air all day long. And dumb it. What, what happens? What goes through his mind? Is that just rustiness? Is it stupidity? Is it a bit of everything? It probably is a bit of everything. I think. See, I got a bit of shit on Twitter for um for, for saying, you know, that I, I've said this for years. I've, I cannot believe he's still here, right? And I've said this from... You don't need to remind me because I'm, I'm in the same yeah, side like, of the garden. I as just you, mate. cannot believe it. Like, you know, But anyway, right, he's here. He might sing good songs behind the scenes or whatever he does. But then that someone then called us out and said, I well, you know, he's not fit and he hasn't played much. Like, he'll not be up to full fitness and stuff like that. He, I don't care how fit you are. You don't DDT someone on the field like it doesn't matter how fit you are. That that doesn't make any. That's not if you got absolutely done for pace or something like that, or you got you know totally mm. rinsed. Uh, fair enough, yeah. Fair enough, right? You, you're rusty and all the rest of it. But uh, he's, he's he's the wrong side of thirty. But that's experience. Then he's yeah. he's experienced games, right? He's played against all the opposition. I appreciate maybe not lately, but for him to think there's just no reason for him to do that at all. Like it's it's not stopping the goal scoring opportunity. It's not that the guy's one on one. He's saying I'm I'm just gonna have to bring you down. Or it's it's absolute nonsense. Like it's nonsense. The ball is never. He's never gonna get that ball. There's a little bit of tussling, but he clearly like has a hold of him by the neck almost and mm -hmm. just drags him to the ground. It's almost as if he forgot a VAR exists. Like it's as if like the referee will not see it. Which to be fair, the ref didn't. Right. But obviously the cameras aren't going to miss that, mate. I don't right? think anybody in the ground seen it. To be fair, mate. No, because... I agree. I... You you could tell by Young's claims something had happened. Yes. Like you could just tell, couldn't you? So in the ground, in the moment, like obviously the play continues. Then obviously it goes out of play. Then they come over the tannoy system, saying VR check possible penalty to Everton. And we think, eh, hey, what's happened there? Looking back on the photos now, the the, the photographers that have taken the photo after the game, you can see that that Ashley Young is, is is screaming for that penalty, and there's a couple of others. Um. It's 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 mental, Degger. It, it's absolutely mental. We have literally controlled the first half, I would say, and there's a, a tiny little blip in the second half where obviously they hit the post, which we mentioned there. Yeah. But other than that, they had, had no threat whatsoever, nothing. And in the, what, 88th minute thereabouts, we have gone and gifted them a goal-scoring opportunity. And, and nine out of ten times, you're going to score from the penalty spot, even though it was... Um, What's his face? I was taking it. And, yeah, Carvalho in twenty three games all come. So yeah, Doc, Doc and Newcastle. It was one of them moments. Back, it's funny when he come when he come on and uh, we were chatting, and saying, and I was like, "God, the old Newcastle, like this is where you'll score, like you know, this is mm. what we are. It's what we what we were." Sorry, um, but I, I, you know, people are not like it. Like, but I, I'm sorry to say, but these mistakes happen because it's the same players that had were in that position all them years ago. It was the likes of Dummett doing mistakes, and all right, he had decent performances here and there, but. 
is it any surprise that a player that comes on of that quality does a mistake mm. and it costs you? It doesn't surprise me. And like, it, it wasn't just, just that. Like, yes, he gives a penalty away, but it was just back to, honestly, the, the amount of flashbacks that I was getting oh, away. Yeah. For, for some reason, Paul Dummett just kind of advanced the ball up the field. He physically can't do it. He was getting in players way on the left-hand side. Then bad, every man. time he got the ball, he passed it back to Burn or, or back to Longstaff in the centre of the field. Then Longstaff was just passing it further up the line. Yeah. I was like, this is painful. This like It was back to, to them days. And, it was. And, 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 and now people are going to say, but he hasn't played much. Dummett could play football every single day of the week if that's what you want him to do. But that's what he'll do every day of the week. He's, there's no difference in what he did from what he used to do. It was infuriating the amount of times he got the ball, and he had an he, he physically looked at the option down the line and went. Ah. I think it was Willick. Willick was screaming, screaming at him for yeah. the ball, and, and he just, just there was there was a player closing them down, but you could have still reach the, the the ball. But it, it's just telling that you look at the Everton players, and when Paul Dummett had the ball, they just thought, well, just have it. Yeah, yeah like we're yeah. not going to close you down. Just have it because we know you're not going to go anywhere with that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, and again, right, and again. Them other things that this is still a reason why he shouldn't be here. That's that'd be very clear. But they're the things that I come to expect and go, right, okay, he's so limited in possession. Mm. But the mistake that that mistake he does, that you cannot do that. Like, I don't care if you're fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth choice centre half. I didn't care. Yeah. You do not come on a football field and DDT someone in the box. Yeah, like you can't be brain dead, you especially do that it. moment of the game. And, 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 and it's mad, it's just mad. Like people were saying, well, he's with fifth choice, he doesn't play. It's not it's irrelevant that that's absolutely irrelevant. I, it, I didn't care if he's fifth choice. You don't go on the field and do that. That's it. You just don't a lot of people, well, well, obviously, yeah, yes, we know Hall's gone off with, with cramp. I believe it was Hall went yeah. off. He went down a couple of times to, did, towards yeah. the end of the game. You, you saw that substitution coming on. I thought Richie would have came on. I did as well. Oh, I actually did, yeah. Because <clears throat> when Dummett was coming on, I had to almost, I checked my notes, I'm stupid, but, you know, Checker was on the bench. I thought, I thought Richie was on the bench because I thought Richie would have come on. Yeah, mm. I did. I really did, yeah. I, I, I thought the same. So I was shocked when Dummick Because well, Richie's had a little bit more yeah. minutes, right? He's like... I was shocked. I was shocked to a certain extent. But then, like like we said, we're, we're bound down the bones of wash, really. So mm. it was a flip of a coin who was coming on. Yeah, yeah. Dummick or him. Hindsight, I would probably <laughs> just, just not replace the Hall. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I think to try and... I, I want to mention Hall. Yeah, he's great, wasn't he? I, I thought he was excellent. And I, I'm really, really happy for him. And I feel like he's going to be the one I'm going to hang on a bit here. Because mm. I've I got I've mentioned this a few weeks now. Where I, I get very annoyed at the constant seem to... I suppose, actually, it's not grapes to Wards Hall in it to a degree. It's also how not picking him. But yeah. I just feel his name's getting mentioned all the time. And the poor hasn't done that. Mm. You know what I mean? He doesn't play. Um, but again, I thought he looked excellent. So composed on the ball. Uh, and listen, though, he did give it away a, few, a couple of times. But I mean, hey, like... The, the, I'll go back to that cross he put in for Murphy. Like I thought, there's no way he can get a cross in here. Yeah. But he did. He managed to get a cross in. He looked dead comfortable on the ball. The way now, I know I appreciate Evan not the greatest of threats going forward, so he wasn't maybe tested uh, much defensively. You might add, but I thought he was very, very good. Yeah. I thought he was great. He's looked. Yeah. He's in the last handful of games, mate. Yeah, he, has, yeah. he really hasn't. There's a player there, right? There's a player in there. Of course, yeah. of course, there is. Which so so we do have a couple of talking points which we're going to put on screen um, for those that are watching live on YouTube tonight. Um, so, so one of them is in relation to that that situation which we have at left back and centre back. Um, I know those that have watched the Monday night over Smiling Face podcast will realise <laughs> that this is a talking point which we get onto quite a lot, and it's Dan Byrne, the centre back or the left back. Which is he, Digger? He's a centre half without any stre- without any doubt, Mark. If you're watching me, how are you? like he was. Quality last night. Mm. He was really, really good. Made some fantastic challenges. Uh, bless him, he scored. <laughs> but it was disallowed for offside. Oh, like, um, like lovely moves. Like, funny yeah. as eyelash. I, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, better than what Mark would say. Um, but yeah, all right, it was it was un- so so tight, you know. Um, but yes, there was a few headers he, he did that were like well, not uh, they were last ditch. Some of them were to be fair, they were last ditch. He got rid of them. Um, it just suits him, right? It suits him. Mm. He, he, he can see the game better. He was absolutely outstanding, I thought, last night, Burnley. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And, and do you know what it is? Um, like I said, we, we do have this discussion quite a bot, lot. And, and I can't say why people say that Dan Byrne is a left-back. But yes, he's a, he's, he's a centre-back that, that plays on, on the left-hand side. So if needed, he can go in, into that left-back position. So I just this, this, these have been sent across by, by Bestie. And I think Bestie was wanting to, <laughs> to mention these on Monday night's show, but we never actually got around to That's it right, yeah. because he wasn't really getting a bite. Um, but there's just a couple of things which I want to mention. So going back to, to Dan Byrne playing out Wigan, um, he played um, let's have a look, 107 games 
at centre back. Seven, uh, sorry, four at left back. Uh, moving across to Newcastle, um, twenty three centre back, at sixty nine at left back. This was before um, the last night's game, I believe. Which obviously we know that he's played a lot more at left back because obviously yeah. Matt Target was injured and he's had to fill in in yeah. that position. Um, and Saint Bottom. And Saint Bottom, yeah. Uh, at Brighton, he played forty three games at centre back, thirty eight at left back, and two randomly in left midfield. Great. <laughs> uh, Fulham, 66, and then one at right back. You can go on and on and on. The majority of his, his career's stats have been him playing at centre-back. Yeah. We saw the best of Dan Byrne last night. Dan Byrne is, is uh, and do you know what is, I'm probably one of these that I've jumped on Dan Byrne's back. It's quite, quite a big jump, but I've managed to get there. To jump on his back and at that left-back position and, and pointed the blame at him for quite a lot of the goals which I've conceded throughout the season. Honestly, last night and what we've seen recently from him, and when he first came to Newcastle United, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what you see him on that left hand side of the, the, the centre halves, he's a great player. He really is, yeah. And and this is what when he's been playing left back and he's he's been getting called. I, I, I just don't understand what people like, if you've got eyes, right? You can see there's a problem there when he plays left back. It's, it's so obvious. It's so so obvious. And everyone I, again, I was getting this for Dummett last night, or oh, picking on a local lad. I, I I was getting it last night and you get you get it for seeing Dan Byrne. I don't stuff, care if yeah. he's from Jupiter, man. I didn't care. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I see on the field, and I'm telling you now. When he plays left back, we've got an issue. Like, and when, when he plays centre half, he's absolutely amazing. Mm. So you tell me. So what were Burn fans saying? Burns, you know, Mark, for example, bang on his left back. Surely he must have watched that game last night, and there must have been an ounce of him thinking, "Great, he's been amazing tonight at centre half." Or do you think they're going, "No, no, no, he's just as good left back. He's better. Actually, he's better at left back." You can't. Well, well, I'll, you can't. People know I'll, I'll sit next to Mark at, at the game. Uh, me and Mark as he's taken next to each other for a long, long time, and, and as rightly so, Mark kept on giving Dan Byrne credit throughout the game, and I kept on saying, and he, he was keep on nudging me as if I don't give him credit, and I was like, well, we've said all along he's a better centre back. I kept on going, well, do you realise now that this is his position? Yeah. Then obviously I've never seen anybody celebrate a goal Aye. when, when Byrne hit in the back of the net. Um, but he honestly, he didn't put a foot wrong. He was brilliant, he was great. man. He was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, and I love it when he plays there. Mm. He would play there every single week. So, Callum Lewis has has a static comment and he says, uh, Byrne had done the post match interview with uh, Newcastle United yesterday, and that question was asked to Byrne. And he said, By trade, my position is at centre back. There we go. We've we've literally had an argument with Mark, and I've shouted him, going, Even Byrne thinks he's a centre half. And he's like, No, 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 play left back all the time, blah, blah, blah. He's not, man. He's not. And I I will say, what What does get me? Tingles, Garnier. <laughs> the thought, the th- let's go away from Ben for one second. I'll come back. With it. Is the thought of Hall, you know, more game time, fitness, that style. Tino on the right. That that you know that foot them fullbacks, yeah, bombing up and down, athleticism up and down the field, and then you think of the players who've got to come back. Oh, I'm telling you, you know, the team will be it will be exciting. It'll be yeah. a great side. And, and and you look at, at at the situation which we find ourselves in now. You've got Botman who is out for what six, nine months to see when the sells and he's going to be out until probably his contract is close to expiring anyway. Mm. And people thought, oh we need to bring two centre backs in. We need to bring this in. We need to bring that in. You've got one right there in Dan Byrne. Yeah. He's one straight away. But burn it burn it what I mean you lose Botman which is awful, right? But I'm telling you now the replacement of Byrne is outstanding. What what a replacement. I mean he's up Byrne is class like and he in that performance last night was identical to the performances when he very first came. Mm-hmm. I remember, I can't remember his first game, but he was excellent, I remember. And I the Chelsea away one was on that, so I thought he was outstanding. And he lost Havertz for a second in the last minute mm-hmm. in the squad. But he was man of the match, do you know what I mean? And I thought, God, every single game he played was amazing. And then, obviously, as you rightfully say, Target got hurt. But he got slightly moved out of position. Oh, sorry, moved to left back. And then this seemed to just stay a trend all the time. Now, of course, I know people will be saying, but we finished fourth and we well, had the best defence in the league and he played left back. I get I get that. But as I've said time and time and time again, the punched above the weight. Mm. And, that, and unfortunately, this season, we've seen the real true sort of maybe line in the sand, maybe 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 a bit worse than what maybe they are. But for me, he's a centre-half. Botman's out. He will. He should play there till the rest of the season. God forbid he doesn't get hurt, by the way. Um, because we need him, we need him. Because if we lose him, oh, I don't know what we're gonna yeah. do. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, and and it just proves that point once once again that yes, we'll, we'll, we'll have probably pointed the blame at at, at Burn for, for quite a bit this season. We have done that wasn't just a criticism of him as, as a person, but obviously just playing in that position, we were never really comfortable with it. Yes, he he done really well last season, 
But everybody played well last season. Every single player on that field played well last season. So everybody's tail was going to be up. Everybody was going to be full of confidence. Yeah. But then it switched where teams started targeting that left back position. Our opposition started yeah, targeting it, that. It, and also to add is, is the cover that you had from Joe Linton the, the, on that left hand side mm-hmm. of midfield. The cover that the work that Joe Linton would put in to cover that side of the field to help the legs of burn. Now that he's injured, he's even more exposed. So it's, you know, it's it, it just gets harder, right? It's mm. it's just the way it is. And as you say, teams have a plan. Teams work work out maybe our frailties, and they've targeted that area of the field. Which obviously we'll kind of look at the confidence which which the defense have in in our goalkeeping situation at the minute, which is is going to be the next talking point mm. here. So so it's about Martin Dubravka. Um, a lot of groans around St James's Park last night uh, because I think last night was basically a, a show reel of of how Martin Dubravka does not come off his line. Because there was a few times where, where there was just because, like we said at the very start of this show, that Pickford just liked to lump that ball up the field mm. and a flick on, then the ball's away. A few times, the Bravka just refused to move back. And, and there was a couple of times where I think Fabian Shaw was one, Emil Kraft was one, where it, the ball's there for the Bravka to pick up, but they have no confidence in that. Or the Bravka hasn't shouted, but don't know. I don't totally want to say the Bravka didn't shout. Because he might have done. It might just be the players not listening. But for two players to do that in one game. Well, that was what stood out to me, actually, was what mm. you've just said there. And that was, I didn't know if you were going to reference that or not. Um, I will add, I will add, when he come out and done a header, panics, yeah. panics, just yeah. panics. I couldn't believe what was going on. He did that. I really like, by the way, it was fine. Um, but then with the moments that stood out for me, that Shea, especially there was one where that was to broadcast ball and actually Shea took it in quite a difficult area, really. Um, that, that did shock us, like, but, so the question I'm guessing is it what what do you mean in stick or twist? As in carry as in carry on oh. for the rest of the season, or does Carrius come in? Because there's a lot of questions in regards to the penalty as well, because he gets a full hand to it. I'm not focusing too much on that because he smashes that penalty. Oh, yes. Um yes, if he goes with two hands, he probably does save it. But how many keepers do you see saving penalties with two hands? It is Never. normally a one hand save. Never. Um Never. it's not a great penalty apart from this power in it. No, it's, it's a right. perfect height. Um if it does go slightly further to Debravka's right, he probably saves that mm-hmm. because he does will get his fingertips to it. But the fact that it just hits the top of his palm and goes over, I don't think that's necessarily Debravka's fault. I, I think you're going to find it very hard for a goalkeeper to save a, a shot of that power. Um, but I thought he was unlucky on that one. To be yeah. fair, he, he went the right way. He did get a strong hand of it. Now I'm normally the, I'm normally the one. If you get a strong hand of it, you should save it. Yeah. But he hit it really, really. Mm. He hit it hard. Oh, he lashes at it. You know, he just hit it Yeah, I thought it. Was, I, I can't blame him for that. Like, no. Um, I think if you well, if you want my, I, I, how is not going to change him? Like, that's what I'd say. Now, my honest opinion is it's a tough one because Carrius, I wouldn't say he's ever done anything wrong necessarily. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Do you know I, what it is? I, I, I. I I quite like Debravka. I think the four of us that normally sit around, around here, I'm probably the one that defends Debravka the most and try to shift the blame towards those in front of him, thinking, well, they're the ones letting people get in these opportunities and blah, 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 blah. And maybe it's a lack of confidence that he has in his defense, and not just the defense that having him. I'd, I'd defend him quite a lot. So, so personally, I let him carry on until the end of the season. I give him another contract, and he stays next season as a second choice. But I think that's what he is right now, second choice. Yeah, I think with, with obviously with Carrius, you know that he's gone. He's been told that. Yeah. So I, there's no incentive, is there? Like, unless, unless he thinks if I play really well, I'll get another club perhaps or something. Yeah. But at the same time, the, the, the Bravka in, for example, last night's game, or I could say the West Ham game, like, but, you know, I think I was thinking, listen, I've stuck with you, f- you know, so far. Mm. I think the only way he's not going to be in goal is due in, through injury. Um, but again, next season, I think that will be a position that's massively looked at. Because it obviously Pope Pope will be back. Yeah. Um. Well, hopefully. Well, news came. Yeah, I know. He's going to miss the rest of the season now. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. You will, and that that's that's so. But you just got to get him right for next season. I think most of will call yeah. that at the start oh, yeah. when he first got the injury. That would be yeah. lucky to see him. Um. But yeah, I think. I, me 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 worry is I'm not saying I'm not saying drop me alright, but what I, me worry is though. I don't think the defence are confident with him. Like to be mm. fair, I, I, I just don't see it. And, and is that referring back to what we saw against Everton as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hundred percent. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a yeah. There's a few times, and I think there is a problem with his starting position. A lot of times, and you're right. Pickford was blasting it forward, and his starting position so 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 rigid. You know what I mean? He's scared to come out if you like, and he's never going to change now. He's, he's too old to change. Like you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but I think we'll stick with him till the end of the season. I really do. And but I will say we're going to concede more goals. That, that's just going to get on with it because we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are. This is what we do now. Yeah, this is yeah. what we do. Maybe yeah. we we'll concede. 
Um, there's a comment in from the blog again that says, last night was gutting. Just hope we can somehow build on our squad without losing Bruno, Isaac, or Isaac, that, that's what we mentioned the earlier on. We're yeah. in full agreement there. But Bruno was very good last night in moments. Very, he very He was, good. he was. So that is going to be the next oh, sorry. talking sorry. point. So, so the next talking point is, is going to be Bruno. Before we get on to that talking point, if you're watching this one, uh, just like the video, it means a lot to us. Become a subscriber. It costs you nothing to do that. If you want to give an extra bit back, it is just two ninety nine a month to become a member. You get early access to videos. You get access to the Telegram group as well, which is full of like-minded Newcastle United fans talking all things Newcastle, believe it or not. Um, and you do get extra extra videos as well. Uh, you'll see the Mark versus Decker series has picked up the last couple of weeks. Uh, there has gone, there's another one just been released this morning, which uh, the lads go around the world, not physically. Uh, but no, we, we, <laughs> we don't get that much. Uh, we, don't, we don't get paid that much. We don't get jetted <laughs> off. Um, but Deco and Mark go head to head yet again and try and guess the flag and a player that is from that country that has played for Newcastle United. So two ninety nine a month. Get on it. Uh, so yeah, next talking point, Decker, like you mentioned there, it is going to be Bruno. Bruno had a, another fantastic game last night, carrying that side at times. We've mentioned this God knows how many times in a row now. What I saw from Bruno last night was was something different, and probably what we saw since we've been waiting and expecting this yellow card to come mm. from the service ban. Bruno, could he be a future Newcastle United captain? So for me, it was funny because I was thinking about this myself yesterday, and I was actually talking to some of the lads today about it. Um, when I think of the team that we have, he has to be the next captain. That's how I feel. And I think the, the reasons I'll say that, I think it, it depends, right? Because some people will have the argument, and isn't everyone's entitled, but some people think, you know, is he going to be the person that'll get in someone's face and shout at them in the changing rooms, jay them up? I'm not so sure that a captain always has to be that. And mm-hmm. I, I honestly think as the game progresses and gets goes on, I actually think that side of captain's going out the window more and more. I really do think It's, it's very 90s, isn't it? It is, yeah. Um, now, well, I'm not mentioning who I was going to mention, but... Um, but Bruno, for example, I, I also think that could be a key point in tr- getting, say, getting him to stay. I'm not even saying he wants to leave. But what I mean is, like, even more faith and we really want to build this club mm. around you, which we are trying to do, give with time. We we'll want you to be the captain. He leads by example on the field. Without, That's the main point. Without doubt. He lead, he's, he's, he's at the heart of everything that we do. Um, And every single player respects him. Mm. You can see that. Everyone loves him, right? The fans love him. We, you know, the players do. And um, for me, he's, he's the more he's the standout candidate. Like if who could get that job, that's how I feel. Yeah, personally. So, do you know what is it? what you saw from from Bruno and what you have seen recently is how mature he is as well on the field. Like, like mm-hmm. as soon as we knew that another yellow card in his band, like, yeah, you get that the next game. He's done unbelievably well, just because we know how emotional he is on the field as well. That like, he's very emotional. Just yeah. kick somebody, yeah. which we've seen him do a few times. Yeah, me, horrendous. Like sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I mean, I can't believe what I'm saying. You know, was, mm. I think we played Arsenal at home, and he's was it no, was it was it, was it he stitched him on the back of the head, just mm. ran past him, and just was, was it that you did that? Got to be careful. It wasn't like, it was Jorginho. Uh, Jorginho, that's the one. So the, 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 without doubt, I, I, I've criticised him for their moments, and he does play. We've seen him miss a penalty and get incredibly emotional. You know, when when, when he missed and. Cry, he cry, he seemed to be crying every week. Mm. It, it was a stage where it was, <laughs> every week he was crying, right? But that, that, listen, I think if you give him the armband, I, believe it or not, you could even get more, you know, an extra 5% of him because I just think that's how much he cares. Mm. And, I, and I think if you give him that option and said, we want you to be the, the captain of our club, I really feel that that to him would be even more like, oh, like, you know, special what I mean? moment, isn't yeah, it? Like you probably don't yeah. get most clubs, 100%. Yeah. yeah, so for me, that'd be a no brainer. Like, for yeah, me anyway. I'm with you. And you know, like, like I said, I was speaking about this, well, talk, thinking about this today, and the more you think about it, the more it makes sense. I agree because, yes, he's leading by example, and that's that's the main thing. I'm, I'm in the same agreement with you. You don't need your captain to be effing and blind and screaming and, and, and calling orders on the field. If they're doing their job and they're they're basically carrying the team throughout difficult spells, which what Bruno is doing exactly to a T right now, mm-hmm. that's what you want from the captain. Yeah, yeah, like le- le- leading by example, and I think he does that every time he pulls his shirt on. It's mm-hmm. Always, you know, always gives it his best. He's he'll always trying to make things happen, willing to carry the ball, works hard, and you still see him now, you know, pointing fingers and mm-hmm. you know, applauding stuff, cheering and stuff on, organising that. You still do that, you know what I mean? Um, Celebrated three thrones yesterday. Ah, well, he loves doing that. Doesn't he? Um, so no, no, mate, I honestly think it makes. I can't see any negative to it. Person. Another feather in his cap, which will hopefully get him to, to sway and stay in on Tyneside. Like you said, well, we don't know if he's going, but yeah. everybody's expecting it'll be Bruno or Isaac. That'll be the 
the, the, the key the figures that there, you're yeah. going to have to sell to, to spend more money. Those are the two players that you're looking at. Those are the, the ones that are probably be top of the list that other players will be sniffing around. Like you said, he's like, looks like a perfect match for Arsenal. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. we want our team to be built around these, these players. Yeah. Cause it would, it would, it would knock us back a lot. Oh, Cause I don't think a... we, we can't pluck another reset. Like, mm. cause the clubs that are wanting Isak can't find another Isak, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we we aren't going to be able to. That's gold dust. So it's, you know, he's that good. And um, we need to try and keep a hold of them. And I think, but, you know, I, and, and that's, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't really read into these things too much, but I did see his, his tweet last night and it was just a bit, I felt sorry for him, like, to be honest. Mm. Like, yeah, it was like an angry face or like, and then it was like a picture of Morton away type of thing, but it was an angry face yeah, on the yeah. emoji. He probably didn't even tweet it. He probably didn't even tweet it. Probably someone else did for him, but. You just no, think, I honestly think Bruno has definitely got control of it. Well, maybe his, his, I, like, probably, but you know what I mean. Some of the things that he's came out with, he definitely yeah. has control of that. I just think he must be getting, he must be feeling it. He must be getting pissed off. But mm. then again, then again, then again, let's look back at Saturday, and it's the greatest night ever. You know, yeah. we've had the greatest comeback ever. So the, the course is great moments and there's poor moments and blah blah blah. And probably players, players probably ride through that storm a lot easier than we do. Like mm. then probably go but on to the next game, yeah. shit, but on to the next one. Do you know what I mean? Um, but I, I, I would like to hope that he gives us one more year. When you see a captain, are you saying from the start of next season? Or do you mean future? On, I mean, and like whenever? Depend on the situation with 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 trips, because because I would never want to take. Well, I would have to take change trips. Lascelles has got the captaincy, but you know what I mean. I think everybody's in agreement that trip yeah, is with captain really. Well, Lascelles is obviously in big trouble now with yeah. injuries and stuff for nine months. So, so months. I would never take the captaincy off trips. I, I wouldn't because what he's done since he's came yeah. on his football club is, is second to none. I, I get that. We don't know the situation in Trippier in the summer. We don't know if he'll be here mm. after the summer. Obviously, yes, with right. the rumours, the links with, with Bayern in, in, in sorry in January. Mm. It was January, wasn't it? Yeah. January. We, we, we don't know what his future is and, and what has he has in store if he's not going to move on to, to that final club before he retires, because he's mentioned that he, he wants to to win more trophies in, in different leagues, and that might be his opportunity if if Bayern are still sniffed around. If that was to happen, which where Trips does leave, it's a no brainer for me. Like. Yeah. I'm the same. People I'm look same. at Alexa Byrne because he's a local lad. People love going down and, that and he, route. He's he's a, a sort of a general, isn't he? And the mm-hmm. you hear that with the documentary. Yeah. How mentions it a lot that he and rightfully is as well. Don't get us wrong. You can see you can see Byrne's character. He is mm-hmm. a leader. He is yeah. a leader, no doubt. He's that nineties captain. Aye, uh, and he he could become in a sense like what Lascelles is now. Like he could be the club one in mm-hmm. in a way from behind the scenes. But I think Bruno's your captain, leading you out the tunnel. Like, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I, I agree. So um, if if mm-hmm. not Bruno, then. Who else do you think could be within the squad we've got? I think that's when you start struggling, to be fair. Because mm. a lot of people mentioned, like you said, um, the way company went to, to City, then he was captain Developed throughout. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people would look at Botman. I just don't see it right now. No, no, I, I don't, just see, don't see it at all. I just I think Bruno's a perfect fit. I, I can't look at anybody else. So the lads in the chat, three of them come straight back to us, but didn't even break and you know both Joel Linton all them said Joel Linton yeah and I get it because he's a, he's a raw raw charging on yeah. the field I get that that's where my brain went Yeah, but I just don't see it I don't yeah. see Joel Linton with the captain's armband I don't I don't personally I must say he doesn't deserve it by the way that's not mm. not the point I'm making Um, but look, they said Joel Linton uh, there's a lot of them yeah there's yeah. a couple of shouts here from, from Brolin believe it or not uh, <laughs> that's his to Nally or Anderson not anytime soon nah but can't say it. Well, Tanali does like. I don't know when he's going to yeah. be back. He may have bet on himself to be that <laughs> now. But no, um, I, for me, that it just has to be Bruno. He's ever present. He's the he's my key player. He's probably my most prized asset. Um, yeah, I, honestly, I just it makes every single sense to me. Yeah. Um, we'll move on to our final talking point. Unless anybody else has got any any questions, they want to throw in, and we'll go through them. Um, but the next one and final one, Decker, mm-hmm. is our injury wars. Hmm. Is it just bad luck? It, absolutely not. No, not not for me. And I've said this for weeks. Like it, it's, I just think that's such a lazy thing to say. Like just, yeah. Yeah, it's just bad luck. That's, I got earlier on not. when people were saying, "Oh, it's bad luck when there's three or four of them." Hmm. We've got a, a full injured eleven, which could be as good as the starting eleven right now. Yeah, but well, will be. Uh, yeah, it, that that is, and let uh, there's there's no way that. Um, that it's all bad luck. Some of it's mismanagement, some of it's wrong, bad decisions. And I honestly, and I said this at the time, I said this a few weeks ago, sorry, that there will be some sort of autopsy at the end of the season and there'll be heads rolling and there'll be a new, there'll be a new, whole, maybe a whole new um, medical staff because things will be looked at that. Yes, I agree with you. There is bad luck. There, Christ, uh, thingy's injury, uh, Tino's injury. Yeah. Ball hits him on the ankle. Mm. 
absolutely bad yeah, luck. Shut there, <laughs> there is absolutely bad luck happens in football, and that is that is point in ca- uh, case in point. But I think you can't have this many injuries. I mean, we've had two, uh, you know, um, ACLs happen within a couple of days. It feels like, yeah. w- w- but w- one of them, one of them, yeah. I think we've mismanaged. The other one is probably bad. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm not. I'm, listen, I'm certainly not saying you're saying that. Is it how his training methods that's given them injuries? I'm not saying that. Well, haven't said that, Digger. It has followed him. Well, I was going to, it could be that. Mm. It could be because Bournemouth was exact. I remember reading all the articles because I went back over about it's Bournemouth. Nine on exactly the same. Identical. 19 players injured and struggling to stay up in the division. And, you know, blah, blah. So something needs to be looked at, yes, because it can't, it can't all be bad luck. Mm. It can't be. Now, what I would say, if you're one of these people that believes that, okay, all right, let's see what happens next season then. What? Because, believe that it is bad luck? Yeah, let, if, if people are just okay. saying it's just bad luck and that's it, I would look at two things. One, how much changes in the medical staff room in terms of what changes are made mm. and then what happens next season. Because um, I think some of it could go hand in hand because I'm telling you, if there isn't many changes and everyone thinks it's bad luck and we continue to next season, we have a fresh fresh squad back, so we're going to go in the summer and we'll get to Christmas and we've got 15 injuries, there's definitely something going on. Mm. It, it, it's such a strange one and yes, we, we, we understand a lot of them have been bad luck like, like Decker mentioned, the, the Tino one, yeah. the, the broken back which, which we're seeing, uh, which was Anderson and Byrne did that. Dislocated shoulders. We've had Pope do that and Jacob Murphy do it twice. The second one comes down to what we'll go back to. Mismanagement. The, the mismanagement yeah. of it where we literally allow him to, to go on. When you could see in the warm-up yeah. that he wasn't comfortable, but once again, well, just go on, just run out, have take 10 steps, yeah. out it pops. So I say, will it, will it, I still think we'll mismanage that. We'll bring him back much in too early, but we'll allow, we'll allow him to play too many games, too many minutes too quickly. Mm-hmm. Bang, breaks down again. And it just seems so. like that not going to affect where, where one of them goes out. It's just like a revolving door, isn't it? One of them goes out, gets rushed back, then the next one's injured. Then it's the same process again. It's just reoccurring injuries throughout the squad right yeah. now. Yeah, and it, it was just, it was it felt that way, didn't it? Because I remember we said, oh, I mean, what, how things he's going to be back and he's going to be back on Saturday. Mm-hmm. But then by the time the game ended, we lost another two. And it was, well, I think it was, <laughs> wasn't it? Well, we, oh, Willick's back. Then Joel Linton's injured against yeah. Sunderland. Like, yeah. you think that was like. A- yeah, like what's going on? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Absolutely right. And I think it'll it'll be looked at. <clears throat> I say looked at at the end of the season. It'll be getting looked at now. I would hope. Mm. Um, but I definitely think when the season ends, they'll 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 take stock and try to assess what 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 can we do better. And that and to, let's be fair, right? Even if you had no injuries, what can you do better? You should, yeah, you you should, you should do that it. in every single operation of the football club. So, but I definitely think that'll be high on the list. Like what what has happened with all these injuries and how can we improve? Mm. Um, do you have anything else, Decker, that you want to go through? Any any burning desire to to mention anything which has happened over the last couple of days? Um, maybe one, but what I, I will say I haven't done any research on that. I've been so busy with work. But um, the Dan Ashworth situation, well, potential or the or the my United. Yes. So I'll see in the my United potential link. So so which... this this cropped up when, when just after we finished recording on Monday right. night, wasn't it? We sat here and you, and you saw your phone, yeah. and it, it's a Man United of, of looking elsewhere and and. Inquired about which, which Jason Wilcox. Jason Wilcox. It's a good left winger for Blackburn, but um, so so look at, at potentially hiring him if for yeah. the role that we apparently thought Dan Isher was walking into. Mm. Where does that leave him now? Uh, what is happening, man? Um, it, it it really stunned me. Like Do you uh, welcome him back in and say, let's say let's say the scenario. Really, it's a, it, it's a, probably a good scenario for us that that man you look elsewhere, right? Then then Dan Ashworth comes back in. Do you then go, all right, fine, forget it, just come back in. Or do you go, hard, actually, we need to start look, continuing to look elsewhere. But then do you go down the route of, you've got to sack him? Even though he was ready to turn his back on. It's mental situation. Hence why we're putting him on garden leave when there was no actual official inquiry from Man United at that point. Yeah. I, yeah. It's 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 a tough one, mate. It's a tough one. Now, obviously, but maybe someone in the comments here may be further ahead than, than I am in terms of knowledge on this. But um, I know Jason Milcox has resigned from his post at Southampton. Because mm. I think there was some sort of clause in there where my United would be sort of in a in an issue again, not gone indeed necessarily, but anyway. So he decided, right, I'm just going to leave then. Mm. So basically, come and get his my United. There is oh, a couple of comments that came in saying uh, the first one's from Chris Jenner that says, "Was was the Ashworth thing not an April's fool?" Um, there was another one saying, "Are oh, they not two separate roles?" We know the powerhouse that Man United are. They'll have a lot of people doing different things. But yeah. having said that. It's gone unbelievably quiet. So let's say nothing's happening. There's, there's still the talks behind the scenes between Man United and Dan Ashworth. It's going on a long time now. Mm-hmm. Like, at what point do we expect to move on? Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I do, I don't know who mentioned that comment, but it's a very good one. And I did think that that maybe it's two separate roles that he'll be technical director, Jason Wilcox, and then you'll have still him as a director of mm. football. 
Um, because I think that we'll have different pieces of the puzzle. Whereas maybe at our place, you would maybe say, other than the market and the sides taken care of from uh, Silverstone. I, um, yeah, maybe that's what it might be. It might be that. But I, I was under the impression that Ashworth was going to be the technical director, like slash director of football. And then with them being linked with Wilcox, um, Jason Wilcox, where he did Southampton, I felt as if does that mean the Ashworth rumours mm. are a bit dead. But I agree with you that it's been so quiet that we still need to have someone in that position. Mm. We still need that job to be getting done. Yeah. Like, do you know, so who's doing it now? And what's the future look like and look for us? You know. So, so apparently, the the, the, the roles of the comments that are coming in, and uh, that apparently Ashworth is from Danny Ringley. Yeah, that is uh, Ashworth was going to be sport and direct, and Wilcox was going to be direct our football. So yes, they, they're different roles. Sport and direct is kind of what Ashworth was doing, really. Mm. What it was, yeah, because. Mm. Like he kept on mentioning the wheels and different spokes coming off the wheels and so yeah. on and so on and so on. Yeah. It's it still leads you back to the the whole dynamics and everything which was happening at, at that time. Like we've a, we've put a an employee on Gordon leave, and we know the reason for it because he's got access to certain things which happen behind the scenes and so on and so on and so on. We need to get this addressed straight away. Because as far as I know, there's still still be no official approach from Man United. No, the, obviously the club must have had unbelievable evidence that they were after him. Yeah, in, in that you know com, uh, conversations had taken place, and probably Ashworth's. I could be wrong here, but did he not even say that he wanted to talk to them or he was willing to go or something like that? Anyway, but it, it has to there has to be a line in the sand where we need to understand <clears throat> right. This is what we're going to do moving forward because you kind of just keep going on like this all the time. Yeah, you know we need this position. We've filled. just wait for you to sort your career uh, out. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. So I just thought the Wil- Wilcox one for and it's a good point that it's probably a different role and it's all part of the same sort of uh, not board but the same sort of team they're trying to put together. But um, it's an interesting one. I just think for our benefit, we need it to be solved as quick as possible. Mm. Really. Uh, one thing which I did want to mention, uh, the mm. upcoming game, Newcastle uh, against Spurs, um, Seller have donated mm. the front of the shirt to a sp- uh, charity. That's right, yeah. We don't know what charity it is yet. No. We don't know if it's going to be a local charity like Sir Bobby Robson. I think it's just a local on the thing. I should, it think local? it said local. So, yeah. Sir Bobby Robson. I would imagine it'll probably go to Newcastle United Foundation. That's well, what I would imagine will go on the front of the shirt. Yeah. Um, but it's it's great. We've 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 seen the other clubs do this recently, haven't we? Where, where they'll just donate for for one yeah. match. Yeah, I think um I think it's 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 good crack by seller to be fair. Because mm. you know, not all sponsors would want their shirt to be to be off oh, yeah. for a game out one game, right? So it wouldn't make that much difference. And, and it is a big game against Spurs. Oh, it is it'll be televised and yeah. stuff as well. I think um I and ironically in a, in a weird way, it almost gets you to talk about the sponsor that's getting taken off the shirt yeah. more because it's like, oh, sell our remote. Because we would have never mentioned that night. Is that, yeah. you know what we would never said the word sell out. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So yeah. in, a, in, a, in a weird way, it advertises them more, um, but not really, really good. Um, and I think it's, it's again, it's it's what, I, the reason why I think I like it, right? It's like what we're, you're trying to do something which, and I could be wrong here, by the way, so I, I apologise if I am, but I haven't maybe seen another club do that recently, like that I've taken like the sponsor off the front and put a charity on it. There like, has been one recently. I can't there? remember which one it was. We've seen a couple go sponsorless for sponsorless. For a game. Yes, I've definitely seen that. Yeah. Um, but I'm pretty sure there has been one recently in the oh, last right. season. I saw well, one fair. of the Premier League teams. I can't remember which one it was, but there has been one that's put a charity on the front. Well, I feel it quite. A, I, personally, I feel quite. A, it's quite a fresh idea yeah. and it's a new approach, and I love that. I think it's a fantastic gesture, and you know, I don't know exactly how much money will be raised or how it's getting. I don't know if sell. I just pay. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. I, I don't. Do you know what? It's it's not I, I don't think there'll be any sort of donation, as in physical donation of money from the club or or from the sponsor. I think it'll just be a donation of he has the shirt, put yeah. your logo on it, and, and it'll that be all over. Yeah. That's fair, fair crack. Yeah, fair crack. so not really, really good. Great. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's great. Great to do it, and it also leads down the route of thinking. Actually, this could happen on a training shirt as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. What? Why not? Oh, yeah. If it's if yeah if they just if it's almost like a free sponsor in that sense, I get what mm. you're saying. Yeah. There's a couple of shouts that saying Forest had a sponsor, a charity, whilst they were looking for a sponsor. Oh yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. They did, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And apparently Liverpool have done it as well. In recent years. Really? Yeah, apparently so. Oh, wow, yeah. I didn't know. That. Um, I'm just taking the comments. That anybody could put anything in there, and I would read it out. No, yeah, no. <laughs> and listen, like it's it's uh, you know obviously I am wrong that it's we're not going to be the first. I didn't think we'd be the first. That's for damn sure. I didn't think that, but. I do think it's a, a really nice gesture to do. It's great. Well, that's us done. I've been going for nearly an hour, almost. Really? An hour. God, quick. Yes, I know. It flies over. It is, flies over. So it's only half six. <laughs> is it? Well, it's quarter to ten o'clock in that clock. Jesus, right? quarter to seven. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, everybody, who has joined us for this live recording. I'm for a kebab, as well. well. <laughs> I actually, yeah, actually, I actually am. I? Well. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, it's been a pleasure, as always. Just like the video, it means a lot to us. Become a subscriber. Like I mentioned earlier on, if you do get 
or sorry, if you do want extra content and you want early access to videos and you want access to that Telegram group as well, which we arrange meetups and things like that in there, it is just $2.99 a month. There will be a link on the bottom of this one or just click join as well on YouTube. If you're listening to the audio, if you listen back over, just give us a five-star rating as well. Just leave a little comment there. It means a lot to us. Um, Buy a new mic as well. $2.99 a month. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. See you later. Ta-ra.